Track 31. So the main focus of the project is the transport system in the town. We need to look at the problem carefully and then discuss possible solutions. We have to decide which one we could recommend to a transport committee. OK, Sophie. I think the problem is not a simple one, as there are various causes that we have to discuss. I think the first one is to do with the bus service in the town. In my view, the lack of buses has meant that too many people are using their cars. The service isn't reliable enough. Yes, you have a point there. It would be good if we could have more buses on the road all the time, but I don't think that's the main reason for the heavy traffic, and the problem won't go away just by improving bus services. You could be right. More buses would be useful, but that's not enough to put things right. We have to remember that many people come into town by rail, and the rail company has been talking about reducing staff and services because of financial problems. If that happens, then more people will use their cars to come in. We need to take that into consideration when deciding on a solution. Of course. I think the town council can find some extra money to support the train service because, if anything, we want to increase the service, to reduce the traffic on the roads. The more people travel by rail, the less they'll use the road. And we would have the added benefit of safer roads, especially at school travel times. True. But one good thing is that the road accident rate has been falling recently, partly due to the high volume of traffic on the roads. After all, when there's too much traffic, it moves more slowly, and fewer people, especially children, are in danger. I realise that, but that's exactly what we have to deal with. The problem of too many vehicles coming in. I know children are safer, but the air quality is much worse. We don't want to have more medical problems like asthma and bronchitis, especially for children and older people. True. And when I think about it, I can see that the heavy traffic means that businesses lose money, people are late for work and drivers get more stressed. So let's think about how we can deal with that and look at the possible solutions. Track 32 So where are the worst affected places in town? I would say one of the worst is by the art centre. I'm not sure about that. Statistics show that the worst place is by the town hall. Well, as most of the traffic comes in from the east of town, that would be the art centre. The town hall is further over. Actually, Robert, that's not quite right. The traffic gets quite bad along East Road, further out of town. It's been getting worse over the last year or so, especially by the Starview Cinema. The Starview? Yes. Haven't you ever been there? No, I haven't. I thought it was by the main roundabout. Well, in actual fact, it's by the junction of East Road and Station Road. That's where the traffic has been getting really bad, especially in the mornings. It's especially bad for the buses coming from the station, as they can't turn right into East Road to get to the centre. OK, so that's the first bad spot then. Yes. Sometimes the traffic backs up for almost a kilometre, and in the evening, when everyone is trying to get home, it gets bad all the way back to the main roundabout. It's bad in the morning and the afternoon, as the traffic also comes in from the north and the south. Remember, there's Liverton to the north and Scottsfield to the south, and a lot of people commute to both places for work. That's true. I live a few kilometres down the Scottsfield Road, and I have a lot of trouble coming in during the morning rush hour. It's especially bad just by the art centre, where the road comes into the roundabout. The buses have a lot of trouble getting through that as well. OK, so those are the two main hotspots, the Starview and the art centre. I've marked them on the map, and that leaves the town hall. Hmm, yes. I mean, the whole area around Central Park is bad, but you're right, the town hall side of Central Park is the worst in the area. It's bad enough right by the shopping centre on the other side of Central Park, but it's particularly bad on the town hall side, with all the heavy lorries coming into the centre from the industrial estate on the west side of town. They usually make their deliveries in the morning rush hour. So you're saying that if we stop them coming in early to the area by Central Park where the town hall is, that would make the traffic a lot lighter? I'm sure it would. Now that we've established where the worst places are, let's have a look at the proposals. Track 33
The first proposal is to introduce bus and cycle lanes on the roads coming into each of the trouble spots, but I'm not really sure that that will solve the problem by itself. What do you mean? I think it's a really good idea. I think it would help a lot. On the face of it, yes, but in actual fact, it can make things worse. There have been a few studies of towns and cities where they've put schemes like that into operation, and one serious problem is that car traffic tends to go off into the areas around town where people live, and that causes more traffic in places where there haven't been problems before. Drivers think they can find emptier roads in residential areas, and it just sends the problem there instead. Hmm, I hadn't thought about that. What about the second one, a park and ride scheme? Well, we build car parks on the edge of town where the main roads come in. When cars come into town from further out, they can park there cheaply and take special buses into the town centre. It's been quite popular in a few other towns around the country. In some places, yes, but not in all. I've had a look at some of those schemes. The main problem is lack of take up. Drivers just don't use them. A lot of these car parks stay empty for a long time, and the buses are often less than half full. It's not always a good use of public money, especially when drivers avoid using the services and prefer to come into town and pay higher parking fees. You've got a point there. We need to bear that in mind. Do you think either of the other proposals would work? I think the pedestrian area is a very interesting proposal. We could turn the whole of the centre, including the shopping areas, into a pedestrian zone and put in a one way system round it. I'm not convinced that would work. You'd move all the traffic further out of the centre and cause more problems. But the biggest problem would actually be with the shops themselves. It's fine to stop traffic around the shopping areas, but there would be huge problems with deliveries. Some shops could go out of business if they have difficulty getting lorries in with their goods. Right. I'll note that as well. The last one is a new tram system. We'll have to lay down a new line through the centre of town, and also from north to south. It's quite a popular solution to traffic problems. That may be so, but the main problem with that kind of project is the expense. The initial financial requirements would be huge, and so would the maintenance expenses. It might well be far more than the council is prepared to spend on a solution. I'll note that as well. Which brings us to the next point the question of cost. Track 34. I've got the details on the cost of each of these projects. The tram system comes out as the costliest. It would cost over £20 million just to prepare the route and to lay the lines down, including widening the roads. Then there's the cost of buying the trams themselves and organising the system. And what does it all come to? No less than £30 million in the end. At least that's what they need to try to keep the cost down to. £30 million? That does seem a lot. I thought it was closer to 25 million, but clearly it isn't. And what about the cheapest? Well, it seems that it'd be either the bus and cycle lanes plan or the park and ride scheme. At the moment, it looks like the bus and cycle lanes might be the least expensive overall. The changes wouldn't be so large. They estimate around £8 million to set up the signs, paint the roads, and so on, and at least another £2 million or so to make other changes. So you're saying it's around £10 million? That seems quite reasonable. What about the park and ride scheme? Well, there are sites which have been identified for development to build the car parks, and as they're not in the centre, it won't cost too much to buy them, probably around £5 million. Then they just need to lay out the car parks and put in bus shelters, which should be around six or seven million pounds, and then get the buses. If they rent them, they could keep the cost down to around three million pounds. So, if I'm right, that comes to around fifteen million pounds for the park and ride in total. And then there's the pedestrian and one way system. How does that work out? That's the second highest. We'd have to reroute all the traffic while the works are done, then change the roads along the routes to make it safer for cyclists, which is around £12 million. Then there are the new signs and so on, which comes to about £5 million, and also the road painting and maintenance at around £8 million. So that's around £23 million. 
we might be able to manage that. Actually, that's twenty-five million pounds, Robert. So it is. My mistake. Maths was never my strong point. Track thirty-five. So we've discussed the negative aspects and costs of these proposals, but now I'd like to look at the real benefits which we think each proposal will bring. Well, I really think that one of the most important benefits is better public transport. The most important thing is to get more people out of their cars and onto public transport. Well, three of the proposals would help with that: park and ride, bus and cycle only routes, and the new tram system. Which do you think would be the best out of those three? I think the bus and cycle routes would be great for town centre transport, but they might push car traffic further out and make it more difficult for buses outside the centre. That leads me to think that the tram system would actually improve public transport the most, even though it's the most expensive, as there will be a new form of transport in the centre without affecting other parts of town. I think you have a good point there. I agree that in the long term it would be the best thing. Do you think that proposal would also increase the amount of visitors in town? Well, of course, any of the solutions would do that. But I'm not sure if the tram system would be the best. What do you think? I think the park and ride would be better than the tram system for that. The trams would help people who are already in town, but a park and ride would bring more of them in from outside. So you think the park and ride would bring most visitors in? Actually, I think if people know that they can get around the center more easily, do their shopping and so on, they would come in more. So perhaps the pedestrian area and one-way system would be best in that respect. True. I've seen other town centres become really busy when they've put in pedestrian areas, so that's clearly the best way of bringing visitors in. So we agree on that then. And I think that people's health will improve as well. As they will be walking around the pedestrian area rather than driving around town. Up to a point, yes, but I'm sure you'd agree that encouraging people to do more cycling would help their health far more. Of course, creating bus and cycle-only routes would be the best way of getting people to exercise. It would also help reduce pollution, so even the people who don't cycle will breathe cleaner air. And we agree that producing less pollution is a really important part of this scheme. Though I think that the park and ride would be better at doing that than the bus and cycle-only routes. I'm not sure. Lots of people would need to use the park and ride to help reduce pollution. Bus and cycle-only routes keep cars out of the centre. Yes, but if people are encouraged to use park and ride more, it would produce the best results. There would be far fewer cars in the centre, and the air would be much cleaner. Yes, that's true. But that's a lot of work for the council. Okay, we'll agree on a park and ride then. What about safety? I'd say the bus and cycle routes would be the best from that point of view. Probably, I think I agree with you on that. Okay then, so we agree on safety. Actually, no. When I think about it, you have to take pedestrians into account as well. It's safer for cyclists when there are no cars around, but I'm not sure that it's safer for pedestrians. They still have to avoid cyclists who don't always pay attention to pedestrians. So I really think the pedestrian area and one-way system would be safer for them. Cyclists won't be allowed in the pedestrian areas, so there will only be people walking. Yes, you have a point there. Shall we change that then? Okay, I'm glad you agree. So that's all done then. We have all our recommendations.